What's up, guys? This is your boy Michael up here. How y'all doing today, man? Grand Rise of Kings and Queens. It is currently 12 a.m., so we have to keep quiet. We have to keep it below. Anyway, guys, in today's video, we're going to be reacting to True Tender Date Horror Story by Llama Arts. <sighs> Llama Arts. You guys already know about these people. Scary. Terrifying. Terrifying. Anyway, guys, if you guys want more, just like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let's start. Sponsoring this video. Get a free 30 day trial using code LLAMA at shutter.com. WAD. More details at the end of the video. This happened when I was 17 years old. It's been nearly two years since my girlfriend broke up with me and I was very chewed up about it on the inside. I've called her several times, but it always went to voicemail. Oof. Well, I can't say nothing because I never had a girlfriend, so... I've tried texting her on Messenger since, ironically, we were friends on Facebook. But still, not a single response. As the weeks went by, I became very devastated and was worried that I'd never find love again. My brother told me to just forget about my ex-girlfriend and that it was time for me to move on. He introduced me to this app called Tinder, which he said was great for online dating. I was very familiar with online dating, but never actually. It was eHarmony on uh, eHarmony. Uh, the commercials of eHarmony was the. Wait, I want to know. Um, is the old guy dead? I want to know if he is. R.I.P. Man. Yeah, if he is. Yeah, because the reason why I asked is because I haven't seen them. Um, eHarmony commercial anymore. But yeah actually done any of it, because there was no way that I even felt like hooking up with some random person I met online, but I figured it couldn't hurt to try it out, so I decided to give it a shot. After I finished setting up my account and was done creating my profile, I just started randomly liking a few of the girls that I thought were pretty. I'm not picky, I just wanted to make sure that I found the right girl for me. A few weeks later, I've had already received my first this man built like he's from Team Wolf. <laughs> first match on Tinder. Her name was Robin. She had blue hair, freckles, and beautiful looking like Raven from Teen Titans. Are you Beast Boy? Beautiful amethyst purple lips. According to her profile, she had the same interest in the stuff I was into, and was even around the same age as me. Even better, she lived in the same town as me. By the way, I live in Memphis, Tennessee. We started having a friendly group chat on Tinder, which was going well. Her message said, You may not know me, but we went to the same high school. And how the hell do you know that? That's an automatic red, red flag for me, baby. That's a red flag. That's a red flag. I replied, Are you sure? She said, Yeah. I was always the quiet one at the back of class. Anyways, I think you're really cute. We should hang out sometime. I agreed and asked her to where she wanted to hang out, where to meet her, and what time I should be there. She said we'd hang out at her place and meet her at the park tomorrow night at around 9pm. I accepted. I got to the park that night at around 9pm sharp. I didn't call her because I didn't want to sound too desperate. Some time passed, and I finally decided to call her to no response. I also tried texting her to no avail as well. It was around 9.30 p.m. There was still no sign of her, and I was beginning to grow impatient. I was starting to think that maybe she wasn't going to show up at all. Or maybe she's probably a, a big 50-year-old man, white guy named Timmy. When it come, no, not Timmy. <laughs> Daryl. <laughs> come on now. I sighed and said... I knew this was too good to be true. She's not even here yet. As so, close, why would you guys meet in the park in the middle of the night? Damn, like, you, you, um, your type, just beyond that. 
if you feel me, I'm not trying to be racist, but you guys know what I'm saying. Like, isn't it not true? Why would you guys meet in the middle of the night in a park alone in the middle of the night and you still decide to do it? Nope. Count me out. <laughs> Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Like, nope. Ruid, I'm going home. I can't believe I came out here this late for nothing. Oh well, so much for online dating. I was about to start my walk home when suddenly I saw a black convertible pull up to my location. The car stopped right in front of me and the window rolled down revealing a creepy looking old man who was probably in his mid-thirties. He gazed at me with a weird smile and asked, You going somewhere, kid? Why is that your business? Are you going somewhere, kid? How about you come get in your car and then like, what? <laughs> Let's get our lunch real quick, bro. Like, I responded, e yeah, I'm just headed home. He asked me why I was out there this late and told him that I was supposed to meet someone, but it seemed like she wasn't going to show up. He said, oh, you must be waiting for my daughter. The man, by the name of Jeff, introduced himself to me as Robin's father, and said that Robin has told him a lot about me. He told me that Robin couldn't meet me at the park because she remembered that was the night she had to go to a slumber party with her friends, and she forgot to cancel. He told me she wouldn't be home till 11 o'clock, and that's when I knew my night was a bust. He apologized and offered to give me a ride home, I knew it was going to take too long for me to walk, so I... Never heard of a Uber, Lyft. Never heard of Lyft, Uber. What the hell? Oh my gosh, bro. You... Oh, Lord. Except it. it was going to be a long drive, but luckily I knew all the shortcuts to my house. I told him where I lived and how to get... I'm trying to let bro like I, I'm trying my best but you people just make no sense I'm not saying everybody I'm not saying every, every one of y'all but it's like what would you tell a random uh, a random Edward from how would you ask a random person at night to tell you where you live there as I got into the car. After a few minutes, I was feeling tired from being out so late, so I closed my eyes for just a few short seconds and dozed off. And there's an ad coming, oh thank god, yes. And there's an ad coming, guys. Not long. I'm back, guys. I'm back. Are you ready? I know I am. Let's start, man. Let's get it. Feeling a little drowsy, I rubbed my eyes and realized that I was still in the car. I asked the man where we were, as this wasn't the usual route to my house. He said, Relax, kid. This is a shortcut. We're almost there. I asked where we were going, and then he looked at me with some sinister grin on his face and just chuckled. I felt my heart almost explode out of my chest as he did that. I looked down and saw a handgun sticking out of his jacket pocket. I put two and two together and realized what was happening. I told him, Let me out now! He responded, No. Then, he no, I'm gonna punch you dead in your face. What you mean, no? put his foot on the accelerator speeding up the car. I tried to get out, but he had already put the job lock on. It seemed hopeless. I'm gonna try to attack you, dude. You oh my gosh. And you told him where to live, too. Like, come on. I was trapped. There was no way out. To make matters worse, we were driving through a forest area with no cell service. I couldn't even call for help. But I just had to get out. As soon as the car started to slow down, I stabbed him in his shoulder with a pocket knife that I found on the floor. He screamed in pain as I was able to turn off the child lock, unlock the door, and run as fast as I could into the woods. While I was running, 
I could hear multiple gunshots being fired at me, but luckily not a single one hit me. I never looked back because I had the fear of the man chasing me at the back of my mind. I dove behind a tree and hid under a bush. I heard the man yelling, You can't hide from me! I will find you! I covered my mouth with my hands and held my breath. Mm, you know what's crazy? This is act this is probably happening right now, like as we speak. Have you guys noticed that? Like stuff like this is actually happening right now as we speak. Sad man, living a sad world. So trying not to make a sound. Everything was silent for a while until I saw the man was looking for me with a flashlight. He flashed it past me multiple times. When I heard his footsteps going deeper into the woods, that's when I knew the coast was clear. I ran, using the flashlight on my phone to help navigate me through the dark and scary woods. In hindsight, I knew that was a stupid move considering the situation. I could hear the leaves crunching and the twigs snapping as I ran, which would also easily give away my position. When the crunching and snapping got louder, I looked behind me and my heart dropped when I saw that the man was chasing me. Oh, that's scary. Oh. I ran as fast as I could with the man hot on my tail, firing every single last live round he had in his gun. But thankfully, the shots missed again. There's nowhere for you to hide, he said. I thought I was going to die. You never thought about stabbing. Not only just stab him on the shoulder, start stabbing him on the legs. Do this, you meet like, come on now, bro. Until I heard the man trip over something, and I was able to get away unharmed. I kept running until I was out of the woods and back onto the road. Looking behind me then, he was nowhere to be seen, which means I lost him. I sighed in relief, and then I saw a red car driving down the road. I was able to wave it down and told the driver that I was kidnapped and almost killed by some crazy man in the woods. It took a lot of begging, but the driver finally gave me a ride to the police station, and I told the cops everything. Unfortunately, I didn't get the man's tag number. Oh, they always forget the tags, man. Jeez, oh, man. But I gave the police a clear description. After the police had run a search, they told me that he didn't even have a daughter, and that they'd been trying to catch this guy for months. As it turns out, he's wanted in several countries for the kidnappings of multiple teenagers and young men. How I managed to escape him is a miracle. The officers kindly gave me a ride home, and I didn't tell anyone what happened except my brother. W cop, W cop, show me. The man was never found, nor was he ever caught, and they say he's still out there, even to this day. But do you not tell him where you live? You told the man where you live. Oh, he's coming to eat your booty, bro. <laughs> Which scares me the most. What's even worse is that I stupidly gave him my address. So who knows if he might try to kidnap me again. Needless to say, my days of using Tinder weren't over after that. The whole incident just made me a lot more cautious from there on out. Hmm. Shout out to John Johnson, Christopher Johnson, and Llama Arts. Y'all did y'all thing as usual, man. Thanks. Y'all did y'all thing as usual, you feel me? Now let's leave this a like and let's read the comic session real quick. <clears throat> Tinder is a horror story in and of itself. Happy Halloween, folks. One of the oldest and the best channels for animation, if I am honest. Hmm, okay. I mean, you got Me Canyon, too. Yeah, Me Canyon. Yeah. Old man in his 30s. Parents, don't just teach your daughters about stranger danger your sons needs to know about it too why do people in these scary date stores always always agree to meet someone they never met at a park late at night 
and guess who we no, I'm not gonna uh, like how how do you not see the red flag there? I mean, yeah. It's just called people, you feel me? Um Yeah man. Crazy. Bedonkers, the donkey donkey donks, you feel me? That's crazy. Anyway, guys, this has been True Tender Date Horror Story by Llama Arts, man. Shout out to Llama Arts for this banger, this banger video. Anyway, guys, if you guys want more, just like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm out the joint, man. Peace. <laughs>